The Amazon Workers Union vote is currently taking place in Alabama through March 29th. The vote is by mail, despite attempts by Amazon to make it in-person only, one of many attempts to quash that vote, allegedly. Other attempts include changing traffic lights near the building and hiring anti-union consultants. Joining us now to talk about all of this is editor-in-chief at The Real News and host of Working People podcast, Max Alvarez. He is on the ground in Alabama reporting on the vote, speaking with workers there. Great to have you, Max. Great to be here. Good to see you. Um, just talk to us about, you know, who have you spoken with? What's the mood? What's the energy? How hopeful are they that this could actually succeed? There's something really special happening here in Bessemer, right? And, and you know, I could feel that just from being around a lot of the workers and the organizers with the RWDSU, which is the retail, wholesale, and department store union, uh, whose headquarters, you know, for the local are in Birmingham down the road. Um, you know, I and I've, I've stood outside the gates of the Amazon Fulfillment Center here in Bessemer. It's right down the road. You know, I saw the union organizers walking up to cars, answering questions that workers who were leaving their shift had. Um, there is a lot of excitement. And I think that, um, you know, for people who are kind of viewing this from the outside, right, there's a lot of, you know, baggage here where people are like, well, this is the South. You know, so union density is lower, but Alabama actually has that, like, you know, the highest union density in the South. And Bessemer is a union town. The the Amazon Fulfillment Center up the road used to be the site of steel mills that were union shops with the United hmm. Steelworkers. Oh, interesting. And yeah, there's a long and proud tradition here going, you know, like all the way back to kind of black communists that, you know, Robin Kelly wrote about in the great book Hammer and Ho. People feel that tradition. They feel like they are part of it. They feel like they are carrying on that tradition with this struggle at Amazon. And I, one thing that I've noticed is that a lot of the workers and the organizers are saying, not if we win, but when we win, this is what is going to happen. So I do think that people every day are getting more and more emboldened, not only by the support that they're getting, um, but by the kind of progress that the union um, drive yeah. has been making over the Max, past months. Max, tell us about the importance and why this vote is garnering so much attention. As I am, you know, obviously famous unionization vote in the South, of course it also involves Amazon, like the largest company in America. But given all of that, why do you think that this particular vote is so important and you know, it, it's important enough for you to go down to Alabama, important enough for us to talk about here as a national story? What does it represent? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question, and it's it's one of the things that, as someone who came down here to cover this uh, historic union vote for the real news, I myself am still trying to, like, kind of figure out the best way to convey the significance, mm -hmm. the historical significance of this vote. I mean, I guess I would start by saying kind of like the obvious, which is that Amazon, which is, what, the second largest company in the United States, yes. uh, especially over the pandemic, we have seen you know, how much the pandemic has benefited the e-commerce model of Amazon. And Jeff Bezos is like wealth has increased by over $70 billion with a B in 2020 alone. Um, so like, you know, Amazon is is really kind of like the behemoth of the future. Uh, I mean, it's really the behemoth of the present as well, but it's only going to get bigger and it's going to keep gobbling up, you know, other businesses and incorporating more of the economy into itself. And given all of that, the amount of power, the amount of wealth, the amount of surveillance technology, the amount of influence that Amazon has without any bottom up worker input or accountability, if we keep going in this direction, right, you know, the, it's going to pretend really bad things, not only for Amazon workers, but for society in general, for this one company to have this much power without any sort of democratic accountability you know amazon is the great ununionized white whale right of the labor movement right mm -hmm. there have been some attempts to unionize workers um not only at fulfillment centers like the one here in bessemer but in other kind of sectors of of amazon uh as as well and this is the one that you know people are most excited about because it feels like it has the most potential to win it includes like the largest number, I believe, of uh, Amazon workers who have tried to unionize 
the plant here in Bessemer or the fulfillment center in Bessemer has uh, around 5,800 workers. Uh, it's it's massive. I, like I said, I saw yeah. it. It's like multi, it's like multiple football fields stacked on top of each other. And um, yeah, I mean, I think the, the the analogy that I've been using for people, right, is like we've all seen uh, the movie Independence Day, right? And we know that like the the humans end up winning because they devise a strategy to blow up like a bomb in the mothership, which makes all the other ships vulnerable for a, for a time, right? And that's when everyone attacks the alien ships. If Bessemer gets unionized, Amazon knows that there's gonna be a flood of union drives in fulfillment centers around the country, and the workers know that too. Mm -hmm. There were solidarity actions in fulfillment centers around the country this past uh, weekend. I actually had mm -hmm. our own Jessel Knorr go to the fulfillment center in, in Baltimore to cover one. So people are looking to this as like a potential turning of the tide in the kind of, um, you know, Amazon's advance to becoming kind of the most powerful corporation uh, in the world. So the last big uh, union drive in the South that got this level of coverage, I think, was uh, Volkswagen in Tennessee and um, ended up the workers did not prevail in their union efforts. And I remember covering all the tactics that were used by politicians, basically to threaten the workers with, you know, oh, the plant's going to go away, or if you vote no, then we're going to add more work, there are going to be more shifts, there are going to be more jobs. Um, these are all, look, that's all illegal, but it's also incredibly common in, common in terms of the tactics that large corporations and their allies use in these fights. What have we seen from the Amazon side in terms of their attempts to thwart these efforts? Ooh, baby. Um, we've seen a lot. And and honestly, we my sense is that we've only kind of scratched the surface. Again, I would really stress to people that however big and influential you think Amazon is, it's worse, right? I mean, like, you know, Amazon, a lot of Amazon's business model rests on kind of like surveillance technology. Like, go down that rabbit hole and you'll see why you should be more invested in this in this story. But, um, you know, Amazon is using those surveillance tactics, uh, you know, to, to, to union bust, right? Like you said, Crystal, like one of the things that I was really kind of blown away by was I looked at the, the sleek, glossy, uh, anti-union website that Amazon set up. It's called Do It Without Dues, and it's, it's a joke. But uh, the thing that really struck me was I was like, man, this looks, this looks like just copied and pasted from every union busting campaign I've ever looked at. Mm. It's all the same stuff. They're all they're constantly trying to scare workers about, uh, you know, oh, you're going to be out five hundred dollars because you're going to be paying union dues all year. Right. You know, if you have a problem, you're the union is going to take your voice away because you can't just go up and, and solve it with management. You know, you're going to be beholden to this outsider third party that's going to put itself in between us. You know, we're one big family here. We can solve our problems together, yada, yada, yada. So a lot of the rhetoric is very familiar to anyone who knows anything about how companies try to discourage workers from joining a union. All the same kind of rhetorical tactics are being used here. Uh, they're like people are you know, management is threatening without actually saying that if, if, if the workers unionize, then maybe the, the facility will have to close down, maybe they'll have to do layoffs, right? They're putting that doubt in people's mind to scare them, uh, you know, out of banding together with their fellow workers and demanding that they have more of a say in how their working lives are run and the right. working conditions that they work under. Um, you know, on top of that, yeah, there was uh, there are stories that um, you know have come out about um, you know Amazon uh, petitioning the city to change traffic lights or one traffic light in particular. So you know I I went to the facility yesterday. I'm going back there today. You know I saw that the RWDSU organizers are stationed outside of all of the gates that enter uh, the Amazon fulfillment center. And there's one gate where uh, workers who are leaving their shift, when they're coming down the long driveway, they stop at a red light and wait, it to, wait for it to change. That's usually the time when the organizers will walk up to the car, the worker will say, hey, management told us this today, like, what, is, what does this mean? And then they'll give them a pamphlet, they'll answer their questions, and they'll be on their way, right? It's a very effective organizing tactic. And so uh, the city changed the timing of the light so that whenever a car pulls up, it immediately turns green and then <laughs> they have no time to talk to the organizers. 
Amazon, uh, you know, has said that they they petitioned for that change because of uh, traffic backups at mm. that site uh, mm. when uh, when shifts are changing. I was there during shift change. The traffic is not that bad because people aren't all leaving at once. Like I said, it's yeah. a massive fulfillment center with a huge parking garage with multiple uh, exits. There's not like a huge traffic jam <laughs> at any one of these uh, lights, so I don't buy that at That's all. An amazing, of course um, not. Story. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, amazing too that the town just goes right along right. with it. No cool. problem. We'll assist you in your un union busting efforts. Um, Max, yeah. keep us updated. Thanks, um, thanks so much for the the information from the ground, and um, yeah, good luck. We can't wait to see the interviews and everything that you post over on the Real News. It's good to see you, man. Thanks, guys. Likewise. Mm -hmm. Coming up, Brianna Joy Gray, she's going to discuss how the Biden White House is using identity politics to support their agenda. That's when Rising continues.